It's the Happy Families Podcast. It's the podcast for the time-poor parent who just wants answers now. Hello, this is Dr. Justin Coulson. Welcome to the Happy Families Podcast. I'm so delighted to introduce you to my guest today, Thomas Curran, Professor uh, Thomas Curran is a British Psychological Society chartered psychologist and an associate professor in the Department of Psychological and Behavioural Science at the London School of Economics, a world leading expert on perfectionism. And he's written on perfectionism and a whole lot of related topics for Time Magazine and the Harvard Business Review. I'm just going to interrupt the bio for a second. Thomas, I'm feeling nervous talking to a perfectionism expert. Like, I feel like I have to get everything right. And I've stumbled on a couple of words. I kind of want to do a, a do over already. Is that normal? Do people often tell you that you make them nervous? Um, well, to be honest, that job title is a mouthful. It is. <laughs> so, so good job. Oh, all right, all right. I'll take um, it, although I'm uncomfortable with the praise, yeah. but I'll take it. All right. Uh, let, let me, so, let but, me no, thank this. you. It's a wonderful in- intro. Thank you. There is more. There is more. Uh, okay. Dr. Okay. Tom, Dr. Tom Corrin's work has uh, been featured in The New Scientist and The Times of London and has covered a whole lot of international publications, including The Guardian, The Economist, The Telegraph, The Wall Street Journal, The New York Times, and Ariane Huffington's Thrive Global Campaign. Oh, and a few years ago, he gave a TED Med talk. That's uh, TED Talks, but for medical people, entitled, and I've watched this a couple of times and gotten so much out of it, Our Dangerous Obsession with Perfectionism is Getting Worse. And on top of that, this year, he published his debut book, The Perfection Trap, and Dr. Thomas Curran is also a dad to a little baby, not quite one. So with all of that out of the way, welcome. It's so good to be able to talk to you. I'm thrilled to have you on the podcast. Thank you, Justin. It's wonderful to be here. I'm really excited about our conversation. Let's just start with some fundamentals. For any parent who worries that their child is perfectionistic, what is perfectionism so perfectionism is a it's a personality characteristic um and it's a it's a way of thinking and seeing the world uh in which we feel we're not enough basically that that we we are not perfect enough that we don't um have enough skills or abilities or uh, competencies we're not intelligent enough not attractive enough um not fit not healthy enough all of these kind of um you know not fill in the blank enough basically isn't that all of us though like don't we all just have that i mean daily sometimes hourly as soon as we stop and introspect do anything that could be remotely comparing us ourselves to anyone else don't we all feel like we are not enough would, would that not make us all perfectionists well it's a spectrum so it's not it's 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 not ideal to think about perfectionism as a sort of I'm a perfectionist you're not a perfectionist right they like, um we're all on the perfectionism spectrum at some level and some people are lower some people are higher some people are uh, more or less in the middle where most people are and everywhere in between um and as a consequence it's really important we think about perfectionism as how perfectionistic are you and some people have a lot of intolerance for imperfection they will worry a lot about um, how they look, how they appear relative to other people. They'll think very deeply and carefully about how they can conceal and hide their imperfections from other people in the world around us to try to really um, soothe those shame-based fears of not feeling enough. You know, this would be somebody who has very high perfectionism, right? Uh, they go through life thinking about these things almost on a minute-by-minute basis. And of course, somebody who's low on those things, yes, they will feel in certain scenarios and situations in their lives that perhaps didn't that didn't go quite so well and i feel a little bit inadequate in that moment but they're able to bounce back quite quickly uh, they don't dwell on it um and it doesn't have an overriding impact on their life it's it's really when it takes over that perfectionism is really in the driving seat and that's when you need to be worried so is there an age where perfectionism doesn't exist or maybe a better way to say it is at what age do we start to see these perfectionistic tendencies creep into our children's lives like most most personality characteristics you're looking here at sort of mid to late adolescence when the personality really crystallizes and these uh, tendencies can start to become dominant features of our identities it's it's important to remember that this is very heavily genetic by the way uh and like most power yeah oh absolutely like most personality characteristics you know the way we turn out is about half 50 percent 
predetermined by genetics. Nothing we could do about that. <laughs> it's just the way we're born. And I think some, something, well, I think there's something remarkably comforting about that, actually. When I was doing research for the book on, um, personality and how it's formed, I was, at first it's quite a confronting statistic, but actually when you, when you actually think about it, I think it takes a lot of personal power over, over the development of our characters. And actually, I don't know, there was some solace to be found there. However, having said that, 50% still leaves a lot for the environment to explain, right? So as young people grow up, as they start to internalize um, things that are going on around them in the schools, in social media, and, um, the uh, parental environment and, and all sorts of other places, there are all sorts of different pressures being thrown at them, uh, influences being thrown at them. Uh, and of course, we're going to internalize those things, and they also have a massive impact on the way we turn out too. Uh, and so, perfectionism is really an intricate uh, mix of genes and an environment. Um, but yes, very heavily genetic, uh, and and the rest of it is explained right out there in the big wide world. So, you talk about three different types of perfectionism in some of your research. Can you explore those and explain those for parents just briefly, the three different ways that we might be experiencing perfectionism? Yes, this is really important for people to be aware of because perfectionism can often look like you know, high self-set goals and standards, right? So um, you'll see in young people that a need to be perfect in nothing but perfect all the time, just nailing every test. Um, appearing perfectly at every possible moment there will be so much pressure to um, always excel and there's a tendency to think that that's something that only comes from within but actually when you talk to perfectionistic people and you look closer about this trait you, you see that it isn't just about high self-set expectations and goals you'll also see a very strong social component to perfectionism too so perfectionistic people will not just try to shoot for high self-set standards but they'll also perceive that everybody else expects them to attain those standards this is called socially prescribed perfection the idea that everyone and all around me expects me to be perfect and i have to live up to those expectations all the time and if i fall short they're waiting they're watching and they're going to let me know and there's also a third element of perfectionism this is what i guess freud would call projection where those high self-set standards that we expect of ourselves we also expect of other people too uh, this is called other oriented perfectionism so this is perfectionism turned outwards onto other people i expect you to be perfect and if you're not then i'm going to let you know so these are the three ways i suppose that perfectionism can express and i think it's really important that people are aware of them because uh, there's a tendency to think it's just about those self-driven standards and expectations but actually it's far deeper than that this is a relational trait it operates in the social world and it's actually those social elements of perfectionism we need to be very very aware of they're the most extreme and they're most strongly linked with um, mental distress okay so i was going to say in terms of the different ways that perfectionism shows up in our lives which one do we need to be most aware of and it sounds like you're saying the the socially prescribed perfectionism to, to me, it seems that a couple of these work together. So when you have that self-oriented perfectionism, that's just totally on you. You're the one who's driving yourself. You're the one who's pushing yourself. You're the one who's cracking the whip against your own back and just saying, come on, I've got to do more. I'm never good enough. But it seems that the, uh, the socially prescribed perfectionism, where you feel pressure from others, and the other oriented perfectionism, where somebody is actually putting their expectation on you it seems that they're linked in other words if i'm a, a a really hardcore parent who's constantly saying to my kids why did you only get an a i, I expect an a plus you're not going to get the hundred dollars you don't get the, um, the 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 puppy dog that i promised you didn't score high enough you can do better that's that's me doing that projection and, and having that hardcore control and expectation on my child mm -hmm. um but they're, then they're, they're going to experience the socially prescribed perfectionism. In other words, those two seem to work in harmony. It, would that be right to say, or are they completely different things? No, absolutely. It's like, um, you know, watercolors on a painter's palette, they all bleed into each other. And the yeah. thing is, what you have to recognize too is, is this is a worldview. So if you're expecting yourself to be perfect and hauling yourself over hot coals, well, of course, you're going to think in your mind that other people think those things do so therefore there's a social expectation on you that other people are placing because they have those same standards that i have now we have to be careful here because even though this is a worldview 
and it is in in you know embodied in how we think and feel about our own perfectionism that doesn't mean to say that it's only you know confined to the in interiors right there are so many external pressures right now to be perfect and there really are people watching waiting to pounce particularly in those massive spheres of social media where you'll be let know instantly if a piece of content that you've put out wasn't you know perfect enough you know so even though this is a worldview it doesn't mean there isn't an objective reality where there are excessive pressures to be perfect but nevertheless you're absolutely right there of course if you're high on self-oriented you're likely to be high on social for those reasons and you're also likely to be higher on other oriented and this can this is where it can really become a difficult spiral because they're very much self-reinforcing and also you're talking about intergenerational transmission there well of course you know if you're a highly self-oriented perfectionist then you have those other oriented tendencies then you're likely then to pass on those perfectionist tendencies to your children too so it, it, it can become a really difficult intergenerational cycle too where perfectionism self-perpetuates so when i think about what you said earlier that we see perfectionism showing up most in mid to late adolescence that intergenerational aspect that um that socially prescribed element. Your, your answer kind of took me by surprise because I do talk to a lot of parents who will tell me that their five-year-old or their seven-year-old is such a perfectionist. Yeah, and, and that's the genetic piece. You, you mm. will see certain early um, indicators of, uh, let's say, meticulousness, diligence. Um, uh, children who have, you know, really <laughs> an intense, what seems like anyway, uh, an intense uh, need to do things just right. You know, this kind of need for order and structure and all the rest of it. You, you certainly would see that, but that can, you know, as they grow older, can express in all sorts of different ways. It doesn't always have to turn into perfectionism. And it's only really, as I say, in mid to late adolescence where these things start to really crystallize and turn into a more coherent, personality that makes us us and um part of that personality may be perfectionistic tendencies yeah now you mentioned thomas that there is a a strong link between mental health challenges and perfectionism can we just explore that a little further because perfectionism doesn't show up in the in the international classification of diseases it's not in the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual uh, that psychologists and psychiatrists use their Bible for mental health disorder classification. I, it is part of obsessive compulsive disorder, but it's not actually out there as a perfectionism disorder that people are diagnosing. Absolutely, and the and the belief in the in the academy is that you know this is some, this is this is something that uh, sits underneath, as you mentioned, there obsessive compulsive tendencies. But the the thing is, and the thing that a lot of um, clinicians have been arguing is that perfectionism is way more than just uh, obsessive tendencies. Um, at root, it's this deficit thinking that I I'm not good enough. And 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 then in order to feel recognised, approved of, loved, that I matter, that I have to be perfect, because there's only one way to guarantee that approval and that love, and that's by being perfect. Otherwise, if I'm not, then as I've just mentioned, people are going to see that they're going to let me know. So if you live your life constantly requiring approval, recognition, validation. Um, in order to feel like you have a sense of self-esteem, well, you're going to set yourself excessive goals all the time. You're going to find them really difficult to meet because they're too high. So you're going to experience more of those setbacks, those difficulties, and count more of those mistakes and challenges situations, which are so important for your self-esteem. You're going to feel anxious. Your self-esteem is going to plummet. Um, particularly in difficult, challenging moments, and then you're going to overcompensate to try to overcome those those uh, difficulties, challenges, and failures by working even harder, setting even higher goals. And you can begin to see how perfectionism really sets in motion a very challenging cycle of self defeat, which leads to a lot of anxiety, a lot of low mood, a lot of depression, a lot of worry, rumination about how we're doing, hyper vigilance of ourselves relative to others, self presentational concerns. Oh, there's a whole plethora just in. Of, of mental health outcomes that um, perfectionism is linked to beyond just compulsive and obsessive tendencies and that's why we call it what's called uh, a transdiagnostic risk factor uh, for all manner of mental health difficulties and and it's it's really one to be aware of because the, the relationships are quite strong and they're particularly for strong for that social element socially prescribed uh, the perfection trap is the book by associate professor thomas curran from the london school of economics uh, tom Thank you so much for your time and for joining me on the Happy Families podcast. Thank you, Justin. It's been a wonderful conversation. 
The Happy Families podcast is produced by Justin Rulon from Bridge Media. Craig Bruce is our executive producer. If you'd like more info about making your family happier, check out Tom Curran's book, The Perfection Track. The Perfection Track is available wherever you buy your books. Or, of course, you can visit us at happyfamilies.com.au. Listener.